thousands of dollars passively a month. That's the goal, right? That's why many of us are here. That's why you're watching this video because you are trying to make a website that creates passive income. And a lot of people want to do this to replace their job's income to eventually work for themselves. And that's great. Believe you can do it, but you have to put in the hard work to understand how SEO works, which is search engine optimization, which is basically how you get your blog to rank higher on Google so you get more people to come to your website so you can make more money online. And it's no mystery why ChatGPT, right? ChatGPT 3.5, 4, look, it even has browse with Bing, the beta version. We're going to test that out in this video. Why ChatGPT is so exciting for many bloggers because it offers what many think is a shortcut to success. But in this video, we're going to figure out what's the good of ChatGPT, what's the bad, and how to combine it all through an understanding to make the perfect blog post. But before we go on, right, before we go on, we need to define what is the perfect blog post because there's different definitions for different people. Maybe you have a blog just to make yourself feel good and that's great. Then that blog that you created about whatever it may be and it made you feel good for the day, perfect blog post for you. Maybe you're a journalist and you wrote something today and your boss was like, great job, perfect blog post for you. But for us on this channel, for me, I want to figure out what makes more traffic so I can make more money online. That's the perfect blog post. To me, the perfect blog post is the one that ranks number one for all the keywords that I was going after so that I get as much people coming to the website as possible so I can make as much money online, period. Now to begin, let's talk about the average length of a blog post. And this, this blows me away because we ask this question, how long are your typical blog posts, right? This is in the community channel. We have uh, almost 13,000 subs. Here's the plug. Here's the plug. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do because we're after 20,000 subs. It's been awesome. It's been a short couple months, but nonetheless, how long are your typical blog posts? Average every blog post on your website and what is the average length? And look at the bell curve. Hello, do you see the bell curve? It was 655 votes. 17% um, down here, all the way to 6% over 3,000. Most people live in this range right here, 1,000 to 2,000. Now, if, if, if you know anything about statistics, things like this, you want to be an outlier when you are a competitor. You want to be an outlier to compete. Michael Jordan, right? He's an outlier, right? You need to be down here. I mean, common sense would tell me if I want to beat these people, make a longer blog post, 3000 plus. Is it hard to do? No, it's not hard to do because we have tools to do it nowadays. It's so surprising to me how well this came out, right? Look at the perfect bell curve. Wow. A thousand to 2000 over almost 60% of people live in here. But now we need to talk about why a longer blog post, not, not just because it's long, should you do it, but why should you do it? And how can you do it with ChatGPT? So let's be clear, this, this bar down here where you're typing in the ChatGPT, you can click 3.5, 4, whichever one you wanna use, is not the first step to creating the perfect blog post. It's not. If you are doing your keyword research in here, if you are just slamming out articles in ChatGPT without using any other tactics, you're doing it wrong and it's not gonna work. I wanna be very clear about that. Now let's get a little bit of inspiration, right? Let's do mesothelioma lawsuit. Why are we going to do this? Why? Because think about it. This right here, this little thing right here is probably one of the most competitive blog articles in the world. The amount of money behind these lawsuit type of things is huge, right? Think about it. Law firms have all the money in the world to spend on marketing because if they get one case, one case in this thing, right? It can constitute hundreds of thousands of dollars. So do you think, when we click on here, do you think this blog was crafted by an expert SEO? Of course it was. Everything in here oozes SEO. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna take a look at it, right? We're gonna take a look at it and learn what it means. Like, why is this ranking and how can we emulate that with ChatGPT for our own good? So off the bat, right, off the bat, above the fold is a call to action. See if you qualify for compensation. I click this, I fill out my stuff, and I'm going to get peppered with phone calls, emails from them trying to make me their client. I get it. That's perfect. And that comes back to, listen, what is the perfect blog post? It's the one that makes you the most money, right? Traffic is great, but even if you had a little bit of traffic that constitutes hundreds of thousands of dollars, you know, that's a great blog post. So a CTA above the fold because they provide a service right? And then we're into the article written by Samuel, edited by uh, Walter, 
right there, EEAT off the bat, because this is YM, YL, this is a highly competitive niche, your money, your life, you have to have some remnant of EEAT. And, and for these type of things, very, very good. Fact checked, what does this mean, right? We click here, fact checked, fact checked. Our fact checking process, da da da. Wow, never seen that one before. Cite this article. They give you sites right there to get backlinks. Is that cool? Never seen that one either. Whytrustabestus.com. There you go. There's all the EEAT right above the fold. And then we're in it, right? What I like to do, right before we go on, is look at the headers. This is a complicated, huge article. And it's very, very well crafted. It's structured nicely. H2, H3, down to H4. This is a beautiful thing, right? Is it a long article or is it a short article? It's a long article. Hello. It's a very long article. Why? Why? The reason long articles work is because if you do it right, they compete for more keywords. It's that simple. Google does not read your articles. It uses math to understand what is in your articles and it uses on-page time, such as, you know, someone comes on your website, they stay for a while. Is that good? Is that bad? Do they stay for a minute plus? Did they stay for 30 seconds and bounce? It uses math to figure out, is your article, right? Something we can continue to serve to people on our search engine. So let's jump into the first use of ChatGPT to kind of do competitor research. I want to use Harpa. Harpa is awesome, right? Harpa AI. So what we're going to do, we're going to do the SEO audit for Harpa and we're going to see what it comes up with. SEO audit, hit enter. Let's see. Let's see. Page quality low. The web page content lacks in-depth information about the lawsuit process, eligibility. So all of a sudden we're seeing the limitations of Harpa, right? ChatGPT. So let's use a different tactic. It's saying it's low, but we know that this is the number one. This is one of the best blog posts in the world. So let's see what it says, though. Add comprehensive info about the mesothelium lawsuit process. Include details about the attorney's qualifications. It did that. Maybe it cannot, you know, click within here and read about Samuel's uh, EEAT stuff. Add statistical data. Make the content. Okay, so it's given us some ideas. That's great. But what can we do? That didn't really work for us too well. What can we do to use this here then? We can push this to ChatGPT, right? And we can ask it kind of the same thing. So what I did, I said, I want to rank, you know, this keyword, mesophilioma lawsuit. Here's a header structure. And tell me the suggestions, ChatGPT. And it gave me junk. It stinks. It stinks. Very generic. So between this and Harpa AI, we're at a loss, but what do we do? We have other tools with ChatGPT. Things have gotten much more sophisticated. We can do better. So here we go. This is ChatGPT. We are using the Bing functionality. Very cool. Tell me how to outcompete this URL. Just tell me. So it clicked on it. It's scrolling down and it's thinking. Let's let's give it a moment to think. And here we are over and over. I've given it time of reading content failed. Reading content failed. So let's try it again with a new chat. Let's stop generating, right? Let's go, let's see, boom, grab this new chat. Here we go. See, right here, browse with Bing beta. Now we're gonna try it one more time. And if this doesn't work, we're gonna fall back on one of the plugins. Let's see how this does. Let's give Bing a try, let's give it a try. And here we are again, I gave it even more time and it failed and it failed and it scrolled down and it failed and that's okay. That's okay. We're going to come back to, to Bing on ChatGPT another day. So we're going to go new chat and we're going to go to plugins. We're going to take off. I don't want this. Take this off. Let's go to plugins. There's Wolfram. Let's use web pilot. Where are you? Our trusty web pilot. Probably the best one we have so far. Tell me how to outcompete it web pilot and go. And our trusty web pilot has begun. So it says the provided link is a comprehensive guide. Great types of mesothelioma lawsuits. Okay, great. But are you going to tell me how to outcompete it? And I bet you if we give it a second, just let it run through its thing, it will. And here we go. To outcompete in this field, you would need to specialize in asbestos litigation. Uh, great. Gain a deeper understanding. Offer exceptional client service. Okay. This maybe, maybe this is the problem, right? Maybe my prompt sucks. So what we're going to do, we're going to stop um, tell me from an SEO perspective how to outcompete that URL for the keyword mesothelioma. I don't know how to spell it. Lawsuit. Let's go. So web pilot is still on. That's the cool part. Here are some strategies you can use to outcompete. All right, let's let it run and see what it says. And here we go. 
another generic output, keyword optimization, quality content, backlinks, you need all these things. Great, great. So I've just demonstrated how to use, what, four ChatGPT tools for keyword research to how to, how to dive in there. And did it work? No, it sucked. It all sucked because you still need to do old school, some people call it old school SEO, like, like using your brain to do this stuff because that's your competitive advantage. If everyone can spit out thousands of words, right? With AI content tools, you need to have a competitive advantage. And how are you gonna do that when everyone can just spit out thousands of words? And it's using your brain. It's using old school SEO techniques. So what is an old school SEO technique? I mean, literally reading this and understanding why they are ranking. Like we have to sometimes read and go deep. You'd be surprised at how much, listen, the purpose of this video was to kind of unwind, try to get you off of ChatGPT dependency because it's not going to save you. It's not going to save you. You'd be surprised at how expert SEOs, people who get paid a lot of money in this space, actually read their competitor stuff to understand it. And that's always going to be relevant, right? It's always going to be re relevant. And then on top of that, I want to explain something. Google, right? Google over here the user over here. They have different objectives. Google says, right? Google says whatever's helpful for the user, then we want it. But it's not exactly true because Google doesn't read an article. They just know keywords and then they know on page time and things like this, interlinking, backlinks. So what happens is to even play, to even play in this, this, this niche, mesophilioma lawsuits, you need to have very specific words in specific places to show Google, ooh, let's consider that article. And then when a user comes on, Google gives you a chance. They give you a chance. And a user comes onto your website, are they sticking around because you're, you're, you, you've provided value with real human language, right? Real things. Because it's easy to get, an, uh, listen, a lot of people, they create, I've done it myself, chat GPT websites and they have impressions, go to the moon, boom! And then impressions fall, boom, nothing. It's because when a user comes onto your 100% ChatGPT website, and you've done nothing else except for just interface with ChatGPT, Google knows this. And one of the main ways they know this is through on-page time. When someone comes onto your website, they bounce because all of the stuff on it is not providing value. So there's two different values. Google value, which is keywords, they understand via math, and then there's user value, provide an actual value to the person on the other side of the keyboard. So coming back to this, how long are your typical blog posts? Why should you have it 3000 plus? It's for that twofold reason, right? We are trying to appease Google and the user. Can you sufficiently answer your query within a thousand words? I highly doubt it. It can be the most simple thing. I highly doubt you've answered it completely, right? Without going drifting off here into tertiary ideas, I highly doubt a thousand to 1500 words can answer it completely. And, and what used to be the constraint was money, right? The money issue of, of making an article, paying a writer, whatever it may be for 1500 words, that adds up quickly. But if you've decided for yourself, you're gonna use AI content, this no longer is a hindrance and you have no excuse. You have no excuse now not to answer the query fully, 3000 plus words, answer it fully without going into a different answer. If they're asking you, you know, how to do a thing, answer how to do that thing. Don't start talking about doing the other thing over there, right? Answer it completely. And you're gonna find if you can do this, you're gonna find yourself as an outlier over here. And you're going to appease Google for more keywords and you're gonna appease your user because you're providing the most value in one spot. Think of it, think of it. It's like a all, if you have a client, if you go to, I don't know, a grocery store, Wegmans, right? They offer many different things. Nowadays, they offer sometimes, you can sit there and eat your dinner there too. Why? Because they have a captive audience. They have you in the store. They might as well sell you the pizza that you're gonna eat tonight. You can sit down with your family and eat it. Why not? You're there. If they've come to your website, why not? Provide them the full answer so they don't have to bounce. It's all a synergistic approach. So then what is there to do? You need to focus on the preliminary work. Before you get to ChatGPT and you spit out an article, right? That's very easy to do. I'll show you a tool you can use that we've created. It's very easy to do once you have the headers, the title, the LSI keywords, but that's the key. How do you come up with your article structure? That's everything right there. Furthermore, your website structure, your interlinking structure, those things will always matter in SEO because they're very, very hard to automate in a good way. Once you've figured out the preliminary work, the quick article workflow, or the custom, 
very, very easy. You can type in your keyword, your headers, your LSIs, and this thing can spit out literally a 6,000 word article, not a problem, right? It takes a little bit of time. You click the create article button, you got to sit there for five minutes. But the cool part is you don't have to do anything. You're going to be working on other things on your websites as this spits it out. Now for the quick workflow, this is like easy peasy. Type in what you want. It's going to come up with its own H2s and H3s, and it's very, very good. And let me tell you why SEOs, real SEOs are not concerned in the current format of things, how things are going with AI content, because everyone, especially on YouTube, we're trying to push down your throat on how ChatGPT and AI is your solve all. It can do everything for your website. It can do all the SEO work. It can make you rank higher, right? But it can't. It can't do the real SEO. The real SEO work is that preliminary work, that keyword research, the real keyword research, right? It can help. It can help in very small use cases, but people like me, people like you who do the real work, the keyword research, we're always going to be relevant. We're always going to have a competitive advantage. Remember, I wanted to unwind you off of the dependency of ChatGPT in this video, right? If you want to learn how to do the preliminary work, I have a masterclass, uh, SEO advanced masterclass, right? It's not, I'm not going to teach you how to do a website in that masterclass. I'm not going to teach you how to create a WordPress website. This is for people who want to dive into the weeds and figure out exactly what to do to rank higher. And if you like the idea, you know, once you get your ideation, your, your actual work done, and you want to push it to an article to see how it spits out, you know, I'll have this uh, in the newsletter. You have to join the newsletter to get this link now, the custom workflow. For now, it's open to the public. You can use it if you have an open AI API key, right? You need a funded open AI API key to use this thing. It's going to charge you token usage. It's very, very affordable to do a huge article. But uh, check out the newsletter at the very least. And uh, thank you, everyone. The community is awesome here. We are growing. We are growing. We are growing. Um, hit me up in the comments what you think, what you're using ChatGPT for. Like, what is useful about ChatGPT for, for what you're doing right now on your blog? How have you been successful using it, right? I would love to know that. And uh, anyways, I hope this provided a lot of value, and I'll catch you on the next one.